It's Friday night and you have nothing better to do which can only mean one thing. It's time for Sis, the last show, the number one news segment covering everything from the already heavily discussed to things we blatantly made up with your host, <laughs> Thomas. What are you doing here, Bolton? And Christina, my name isn't that hard to spell well. Starting off with campus news, Christina, have you also grown radicalized against the learning institution we paid tens of thousands of dollars to? Oh, absolutely. After four years here, I am ready to burn this place to the ground. <laughs> as much as I fantasize about committing acts of domestic terrorism in Christopher Newport Hall, in the hit video game Minecraft, <laughs> I think it would be best if we just vented our frustrations out on stage instead. You're probably right, but that is way less fun. Um, what's your biggest qualm, Thomas? Well, we pay all this money and it just seems to go to the bottomless cab budget. A whole lot of fancy people get rides on the golf carts when they could definitely just walk. And there's never any paper towels on the non-secret second floor library bathroom. I like bouncy houses and fanny packs as much as the next guy, but what if we just took all that money and gave it to some clubs? Or to the hardworking janitorial staff? Or... To literally anything else besides another fucking event where a bunch of non-students show up and just hang out. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the president's insane paycheck. Or the president's insane paycheck. <laughs> I don't know how much it is, but Baldy is getting paid way too much to do nothing. I couldn't agree more. Not to mention our last RA staff meeting, a $15 paperback book about the Christian God was distributed to all of the RAs, whether we wanted it or not. Ah. Uh, <laughs> due to the ancient text of seeing you tonight, we can't say who wrote the book, but we can tell you it's someone just fancy enough to get their book with color photos handed out to all the RAs on your dime. But I'm sure all the RAs love their new book, right, Christina? Mm, that is quite a bold assumption of you, Thomas. Little did you know, most of the RAs that don't identify as Christian were quite offended. Well, I'm sure you at least had the option to shrimply not accept the book, right? <laughs> no! I just handed it to us after we sat down, and we had no way to even politely or rudely refuse it. Well, I'm sure CNU has the RA's best interests in mind, and they shrimply just wanted to give away free books. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they had no idea they could possibly do anything wrong. Just like how they say they're supporting student workers by firing them or cutting their hours. Darn. It turns out the governing body we pay thousands of dollars to for a fancy piece of paper that lets you be opinionated might be bad with our money. Now I'm sad. <laughs> Bummer. But speaking of people who have fancy pieces of paper, Joel, our, one of the previous presidents of CNU tonight, recently made a video for all current and future members of the club. Have you seen it yet? No. But I have seen the part that concerns me, which is the part I care most about. <laughs> Naturally. What did you think? I loved it. Outside of being well edited and very heartwarming, somehow Joel has access to footage of me in my first sketch. Something the club doesn't even have recorded. <laughs> Which is slightly creepy, but mostly endearing. <laughs> I love you, Joel. I love you too, Thomas. I agree with the fact it was awesome. It was super sweet of him to make it. Uh, I didn't think it was creepy that he had the footage. I'm more impressed than anything, honestly. Um, but shout out to Sky Sailing. Joel and I are favorite artists. Woo! <laughs> Yes, yes. Joel is quite wonderful. You know what isn't wonderful? Being plagiarized. Plagiarized? <laughs> yes, Christina, plagiarized. During our last show, we had a sketch called Academic Tour, where we follow the misadventures of David Doughty as he tries to explain where the hell everything is on campus. So when we see this clear imitation of it... All right. Someone's getting paid to do that. Ah. We get kind of angry. Diabolical. Despicable. Devious. Dicks. Thomas, <laughs> tell Andrew to make a committee to round up all the pre-law majors. We're suing. Don't tell me what to do. Andrew! Make a committee to round up all the pre-law majors! No! <laughs> Thomas, am I the only person who realized that a lot of people have been getting engaged recently? Oh, thank God you mentioned it. I thought it was just me. I know, pretty crazy, right? Yeah, honestly? Mm -hmm. Kind of cringe, though. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you bringing this up? Well, now that a lot of people are getting married, they're going to need to find a place to, you know, get married. 
And what better place would there be to get married than the world-renowned, clinically claimed Oscar Mayer Wiener Mer- <laughs> <laughs> What? In Las Vegas, for one magical weekend, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile is going to be parked right next to the Little White Wedding Chapel for happily wedded couples to say their vows right in front of the giant wiener. That's interesting. And it's free? Uh, well, you have to pay $102 to the chapel for a Nevada marriage license, but other than that, yeah, it's free. Who would be stupid enough to do that? My successor, Thomas. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's right. Seeing you tonight's historian, Austin Molina, and assistant director, Drew Blanford, are now officially engaged and are currently having their wedding ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is the kid? Their son, Weenie Hut Jr. <laughs> we're moving on. Speaking of a forced exit, two prisoners were found in an IHOP after tunneling out of prison with a toothbrush. Such an interesting choice of dining establishment for your first meal out of prison. Mm, they should have gone on International Pancake Day like us. Christina, we didn't get to go to IHOP, remember? They were booked, likely by all the escaped convicts, mm. and then we had to go to TGIF Fridays, but they wouldn't serve us because they suck. <laughs> and we went to Chili's, and CJ made one of the worst trade deals of all time. I do remember! I sat at the bar of TGI Fridays, and you called them, and I watched you, them walk past the ringing phone for 15 minutes and ignore both it and me. Trade deal was pretty terrible, but you definitely came out on top with a burger and a side of fries for just a small bowl of chili. Yes. I love being on top of CJ. <laughs> That's foreshadowing. Hey, no spoilers! <laughs> and other news. Pickled anus. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you just say pickled anus? Yes. You, a grown ass man, just said pickled anus. Yes. Why? Them's comic words. Well, Christina, but spelled with a Y, a classic CNU Tonight sketch, Pickled Anus, was uploaded to YouTube in 2019. I already knew that. I was in that sketch. But what you might not have known was that some random guy on the internet actually found a video and commented on it last month. Over three years later. <laughs> you are telling me that a grown ass man was scrolling through YouTube, found a video called The Pickle Angels, and then not only watched it, but commented on it. Yes. <laughs> Guess I've seen worse. Wow, Christina. Wasn't that last bit really hilarious? Mmm, yeah, sure. This just in. I have extremely horrible facial hair. Hey, we don't pay Austin to write that. <laughs> it is I, Andrew Riley Reed Emerson. <laughs> For too long, I and my fellows of the Beard and Facial Hair Enthusiasts of America, or Bala for short, have allowed your horrible facial hair to represent us in a... Goddamn... <laughs> <laughs> to poorly represent us! Today, I have come to claim our retribution! Face me in Mortal Kombat! Oh, calm down, Andrew. You can't even grease his mustache. Yes, I can! With this technology! <laughs> <laughs> what revolutionary technology. Nah, I'm just kidding. This isn't scary at all. He's still too short. Yeah, guess you're right. Curse you, genetics! And a large amount of sugar as a child! <laughs> <laughs> well, that was strange. Eh, seems like a normal day to me. Speaking of hairy, disgusting creatures that have never showered, woolly, mammoth... Meatball. <laughs> Sciopen- scientists and independent contractors alike are collaborating in an attempt to bring back the woolly mammoth. I don't know about you, but I feel like I've seen this movie before. <laughs> You're right, I have seen this movie. However, I think things would have gone quite differently if they brought back the T-Rex just to eat them instead of, you know, building a zoo. Hmm, interesting idea, T-Rex burgers. Do you think that'd be kosher? Hmm... If only we had a Jewish cast member capable of answering this burning question. But we do not. <laughs> Sad but true. Anyways, 
It's actually pretty cool they were able to grow a meatball from a few cells as a humane way to get meat that doesn't involve slaughtering animals. I don't care about that. <laughs> I wonder how it tastes. It's supposedly, and I quote, really tasty. <laughs> Wonderful. I can't wait this to be for this to be an affordable snack option in 10 to 20 years. Mm. In breaking news, plants scream when they are thirsty or in pain, and some scientists believe they evolved this mechanism to call upon their insect armies to protect them. Ah, uh, just like me for real. <laughs> but, Christina, I have never heard a plant scream. Are you lying, or are these plants just very courteous? Let's take a listen. Christina, that sounds nothing like screaming. In fact, I'm pretty sure this was just recorded with a broken microphone. I reject this assertion wholeheartedly. Ah, well, I guess I'll have to tell all those renowned botanists they were wrong because some physics undergrad says so. Yes, please get on that. Speaking of forced transitions, how did you feel about last month's big sporting event? Uh, what sporting event? You can't be serious. How could you not know about the most anticipated sporting event of the year? Oh, yeah, March Madness. I guess I don't really follow college basketball that much. <laughs> ah, Christina, no one gives a shit about college basketball. March Madness is for pussies. I'm talking, of course, about man boob madness. Yeah! 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 <laughs> What the absolute fuck is that? <laughs> a bracket of the most titillating man boobs we've ever seen, featuring Markiplier, Let's go! Johnny Bravo, and the entire cast of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. <laughs> okay, I guess those are some pretty compelling man titties, but uh, who won? Well, sweeping the floor with all of his competitors, the winner was, of course, the solo K-pop artist, Wanho. Yeah! <laughs> Why? That guy looks last flatter than a quesadilla at Red's. Oh, that's the wrong image. Oh, uh. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that geometry on those <laughs> knuckles. Porn stars wish they could get surgery for breasts like that. And if that's not convincing enough, behold! A one hole pillow! <laughs> oh, <my laughs> it's the, an accurate three model <laughs> one hole. Now, let's see what a resident expert on man boobs has to say about this. But we don't even have a... Hello, citizens of America. I am Kaylee Molina, seeing you tonight's resident man boob enthusiast. What? Man boob enthusiast? What does that even mean? Shh. I like man boobs. <laughs> don't interrupt the professional Christina. What do you have to say about this man boob? <laughs> nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a reason he won gold in Man Boob Madness. I guess so. Speaking of SLS sections written by Puerto Ricans, we have a special announcement from Senior Tonight's historian, Austin Molina. I swear to God, if he makes me play that damn Pike Kid video again. Well, he's actually coming out here for a formal apology. What? Yeah, apparently he wants to make amends for torturing you with Tight Kid for a year? Really? That's great! Bring him in! Hi, Austin. Hey, Thomas. Hi, <laughs> Good evening. I am Austin Molina. Some of you may know me as Austin Molina. <laughs> Others may know me as the guy who was in The Manly Maids. And the rest of you may know me as that one asshole who keeps putting Kite Kid in SLS. <laughs> and for those who know me for the lighter, I would like to make a formal apology for my actions. They say it takes courage for one man to admit that they are wrong. <laughs> that learning your mistakes is a part of life in order for us to become better people. And the willingness to move forward to become that better person is what divides the strong and the weak. And after much thought and consideration, I have come to terms with the fact that I am not that strong of a person, so it's why you don't need to be in the kid's actual fight! No more kiting! Sadly, Austin did not make it out alive. <laughs> 
why I'm sure this was a bit we will all never forget. Well, <laughs> that concludes tonight SLS. But before we go, we'll leave you with this image of Kirby with human legs and feet. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Did Austin write this? Yep. <laughs> All right, have a good night. Woo! 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 Woo!